Welcome to Garden Wise Adventures. My name is Malie and today is the sixth video in my Beginning Gardener series and today we're going to talk a little bit about soil. Now I'm going to get into soil fertility a little bit later in this series but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what you need to know before you site your garden beds. So this is the site selection part of my series. And sorry about the sun, it is really bright out here with all the snow. It's about 20 degrees, it's, it's quite cold. And so we're gonna go inside and look over some past videos that I made to talk more about soil. But first I wanted to show you what my soil looks so like, where place. my garden beds are sited, and why I did what I did. So the best place to get kind of a good picture of what my soil looks like is right here under my deck. It has not been amended. It's full of all the rocks that it normally has, and this is what the soil looks like that I've been trying to garden in. Let me go show you where I put my garden beds. This is a nice little hill where I put my garden beds, and the soil under here is a little bit different than the soil under my deck because the previous owner decided to do a little bit of amending. What he did, you know, this was all grass when I first moved in, and what the first owner did is he brought in a load of sand I think he kind of, I think he may have ordered topsoil, I don't know. He must have ordered topsoil but got sand instead. And I'll show you a picture a little bit later of what the layers in my soil looks like and what it means to have layers. But because of all the rock and because of the problems in my soil that I'm gonna go over in just a few minutes, I needed to think about how I was going to do my garden beds. In-ground garden beds on a slope are impossible because of the water drainage. And the rocks that were, were in the soil were, would make it impossible to dig. I actually have to use a pickaxe and a crowbar if I'm going to dig into my soil. So raised beds were the option for me. Now I'll show you a few pictures of the development of this part of my yard. This is what I count my food forest. It also used to be lawn and you know, there was a layer of sand over the top of the rocks and clay. So I decided to bring in different soils so I could plant in the ground down here. Now this is visual of my property off my deck. You can see all of the plants that are growing on the hill over there. None of that ground was amended. When you're thinking about the soil on your property, there are several different things you need to think about. Now we'll go over these in detail in just a, a little bit later in this video. But one of the first things you need to think about is your soil texture. Is it sand? Is it, is it clay? Is it loam? And what does that mean? In my case, how many rocks are there? And what do you want to grow? Now, as you can see in the hill behind me, there are trees and shrubs growing happily through all of the rocks with very little soil there. And there has to be some for fertility because I never fertilize that area. So the trees and shrubs with their extensive root systems do really well. Vegetables would not. Vegetables and perennials would not do as well there. So that's texture. The next thing you need to think about is how fertile is your soil. Now we are going to go through fertility a little bit later in this series, but you're going to be surprised when we talk about fertility and how much fertility there is in normal soils. We think about adding compost and manure and all this fertilizer and special magical substances that you know, supposedly make the soil more fertile, but we're going to learn a bit a little bit later in this series how that can sometimes be more harmful than good and that sometimes the soil that you have is better than any soil that you can, can create. So fertility is something you need to think about. Along with fertility, you need to start thinking about is there anything toxic in your soils? Not many of us have the issue with heavy metals or tox you know, heavy toxins in the soil, but some might. And that might be something you need to research and check out and make sure that you, your soil is not toxic in any way. And we're also going to talk about soil samples and sending them in to be tested a little bit later in this series. Another thing you need to think about is pH. What is the pH of your soil? And what that means is you need to look at and see if it's more on the alkaline side, like we are here in Utah, we have limestone cliffs behind us and all of our water is alkaline because it runs through the limestone cliffs. Or is it acidic? You know, on the East Coast, you have more organic soils, you know, soils that are more acidic, newer soils, soils that are not surrounded by limestone. So you need to know the pH of your soil because the pH of your soil will affect what can grow there. So as you can see, we have snow covering our soil and the soil is very much frozen and I'm not gonna be able to do any digging right now. 
So what I did instead was dig through some of my old video footage. And I did some videos that had really good information when I first started making videos. The filming was poor, the editing was poor, but the information was good. So I went and pulled out some of those clips and we're gonna go over those and talk a little bit about soil texture and drainage. Drainage is one of the other things we need to look at. So let's look at some of my old footage and talk a little bit about soil and drainage and texture. Now in the first clip, I wanted to do an experiment on soil texture and I wanted to show you how to tell you what texture your soil is. Now I have some pretty distinct textures in my front yard. The bottom layer is clay and the middle layer is sand and then the top is compost. So I took some samples of each of those and wanted to show you kind of how to tell the difference. So the first one is sand. Now sand does not easily form a ball, although it looks like it's doing it right there. And it falls apart when you mess with it with your fingers. So that's how you tell what sand is. Now clay is a little bit different. It easily forms a ball in your hand while, when it's wet. And when you squeeze it, it will form ribbons through your fingers. Now this one is not pure clay, but there's enough clay in there that you're getting the ribbon look but it does fall apart a little bit more because of some of the sand and loam that is mixed in with it. Now the next one is actually pure compost, so it's not really truly loam, but it shows you a little bit of what loam might do. It does not form a ball and it falls apart easily when you try to mess with it in your hands. So I mixed all three types of soil together, put them in a jar and then added some water. I took that jar, uh, shook it up, and then let it settle overnight. As you can see, there's a white, really thin layer on the top, and that's the clay. And there is clay that is still suspended in the water. On the bottom, you have sand. Now sand is extra heavy, so it does sink to the bottom. And then that middle dark layer is the loam or the organic matter. So once you understand the texture of your soil, the next thing you need to do is figure out how well water drains through it. So I did an experiment in my yard, dug several holes. This one was down all the way through all of the layers until I hit the clay and the rock. So I filled that layer up to see how fast it would drain. And then I went and I dug just to the sand layer. So that is mostly sand. Underneath that is the clay and the rock. And I filled that one up. And then the next one, I dug down, but I left a layer of organic matter over the sand. So there's organic layer, then sand, and then clay. So then I went to see how fast they drained. So obviously the rock helps the clay drain. The sand drained really well. And then this one with the organic layer over the sand did not drain at all. So all of these drained for the same amount of time. Now to understand why this happens, why this last one didn't drain as fast as the others, I decided to do another experiment. In this experiment, I decided to take four beakers and they filled them with different types of soil. So one is pure sand, one is the pure organic matter, one is pure clay, then one has clay on the bottom, sand right in the middle, and then organic matter over the top. Then I added water and waited to see how fast the water percolated. Now the sand went all the way to the bottom really quickly. This experiment took about five minutes. So you can see that's wet and the organic matter also went all the way to the bottom. But the clay did not soak up all the water that fast. So water goes through clay a lot more slowly. Now the interesting one was the last one. On the last one, we have what's called a perched water table. And what happens is the water needs to soak all the way through and completely fill up the organic matter before it will percolate through the sand and then go down into the clay. So I thought that was really interesting. Golf courses will utilize that method to create perched water tables, which holds water closer to the roots of the grass. Now this isn't the best th option for your landscape. You'd rather have water percolate down through the layers and into the soil below so that your roots will grow deeper. Now to avoid this, you should not bring in coarser layers and layer them between the clay below and organic matter up on the top. Now, if you don't want to dig holes in your landscape, there is a tool that you can use. This is called a soil probe, and this will help you be able to see the different layers of your soil. They do have a window in it, and you can take that soil probe and push it into your soil. Make sure your soil is a little bit moist so that it goes through easily. 
and then you can pull out what's called a core sample. Now, when you pull out that core sample, you'll be able to see the different layers of your soil. So as you can see here, we have that sand layer at the bottom, and then we have where the roots on my grass have penetrated to. Now, if I had pushed a little further, I probably would have been able to get through that clay layer except for all of the rocks. So when it comes to soil, we've covered the basics of what you need to know before you choose a place to put your garden in your yard. Now, the one thing that we didn't cover is soil pH, and that will be covered more in depth when we discuss the fertility of the soil later in this series. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. I hope you like, subscribe, share it with your friends. So if you have any more questions about soil, let me know in the comments below and go have a wonderful garden adventure.